What I'd like to go over now is the actual flashing of a unit, if you have to go through and do your update to the new 50. Uh, up on the screen, on the uh, left-hand side, it tells you how to do a flash. Right-hand side is a prom. I'm going to show you guys where the prom unit is, but I'm going to go through the flash uh, part of it first. Uh, very quick, very simple. We use what's called a PPM, a portable programming module, or as a lot of the techs like to call it, the banana. Me, Not a problem. As you see, there's only one button on there. Button. <laughs> <laughs> the banana button. The banana button. That's right. There's one button on there, and there's two LEDs, a red and a green. When you're doing a download, you're going to see them flashing. And what I'll do is I'll try and set it in front of the camera as it's going on. So when you, when you come in to do an update, you're going to open up your game. You obviously want to have power left onto your unit. You need to have power onto it to do your update. Simple USB cable, plug it in. Now, all we're going to do is push the button. Now, there you can see the LEDs. You'll see your red flash and your green is solid. At this point, you know you're doing an update. Now, usually it takes approximately 30 to 35 seconds to do an update. The way you'll know that it's done is these lights are going to go solid for a second, and then they're going to go off, and you're going to get a cycle and stack out of your unit. And if I keep on talking here, we just hit it. That's how long it takes you to update your unit. Very quick. The nice thing about it is you don't have to pull your units out of the game, take them down to the shop, set them on a computer, and do your download one at a time. Now, granted, you can only do one of these one at a time, but you're up at the game, open the door, 45 seconds later, you're shutting the door. We're going to go over the updating of the banana. That is actually in the STS program that I strongly suggest if you've got cash flow on your floor that you get if you don't already have it. Does it maintain the configuration? Yes, it does. What it'll do is with the, with the programming module, you can actually go through and update your boot code and update your version of code that's going to go into your head. Now, what we do suggest is that you use one PPM for boot code, one PPM for your validator version. Uh, we've tried to go both at the same time, putting both codes on there. We ran into some issues. I don't know if they've been resolved yet, but the quick fix at the time was only use one for one. Now, you guys have seen that. It's a real quick setup, real quick upload. Now, if we were to do a prom unit, as you can see on here, where are we at? There we go. There we go. Okay, we've made it. Now, you can't see any place where you would put a prom. Actually, it's underneath your, your yellow, excuse me, release latch. So if you were to open this up, and because this is made of plastic, you can just take it from the corner, bend it up a little bit, and open it up. And then right here is where your prom chip would go in. The flash is used on what style machine? The flash can be used on any style machine. Now, this is, all, this is a jurisdictional thing here for your prom unit. Some jurisdictions, like I said, New Jersey requires all of their build validators to use PROM chips in it. One shots so that nobody can go through and change the firmware on it. Once again, I told you before that if you put a PROM chip in here, you have made this a PROM unit forever as far as you're concerned. If you need to turn it back into a flash unit, you need to send it back into us. You could hook, you could hook it up to a PPM or you could hook it up to your STS system, and you can try to flash it, but the program that's held in the memory on the chip, even if the chip's not in there, is going to override any flash that you try to do to it. Turnaround time is usually, well, let me put it to you this way. 
when we get the unit into us, into our shop, we have four days to get it all done. Exactly. If, if you're in a jurisdiction where EPROM is required, all they're going to do is request new PROMs from us that are already programmed. Okay, the, the, the question is, is there a way to tell from the PPM whether or not something, the unit has been downloaded? And no, you can't. Well, yeah, 45 seconds and you know it is. Well, it's, yeah, if you actually do a download. But in order to just plug it in and to see what kind of code you've got on there, you can't do that. You actually need the STS program for that. <laughs> or you could try a new 20 in there. So we've been through the flash update and the prom update. What, uh, what kind of prom do you use in that? Is that something we can burn at the uh, The question was, what type of proms are being used in there? Yes, actually, if you have a chip burner, you can actually burn those proms as long as you have the correct firmware. Now, you're going to be running off of a, uh, what is it, uh, a 27, I believe, is a one shot, and then the 29s are flash. These are quad packs, right? Yeah. But uh, yes, you can actually do that in-house if you need to. Do we have any other questions on the uh, updating? You said the 127 was one shot. I believe, I believe it's the 20... Oh, 27 is a one shot, 29 is a flashable. Yeah, well, I mean, all you can do is throw it away. Yeah. There's nothing else you can do with that one unless you've got an, an old unit in another place that's, got old, that's looking for old firmware, and then you can try and sell it to them. Now, one thing I do have to tell you, if you're using the ZT series uh, bill validators, the chips look identical, but the difference is in the ZT series, you're running a one meg chip, and in the uh, cash flow series, you're running a 4 meg chip. So you wouldn't be able to take a chip out of a ZT, flash it, and put it in here and make it work. Excuse me? I haven't tried that, so I wouldn't know. But I'll go, I'll go back to the shop, and I will try that and see if it works. I would assume that it should work. I mean, because you, you're just look, you're, you're looking at using up less RAM compared to using more. Maybe that melt chip just a little bit bigger than the one in the ZTs? Physically, it sure looks like it to me. As far as I know, they're the same size. But then again, I haven't programmed any of the chips, so I haven't gotten that close to them. They, for the most part, look identical. Any other questions on the flashing? Nope. You, you got no feedback on them losing the, uh, the when you flash and upgrade them, them def defaulting back to the old, uh, the old flash. Okay. The, you know the issue I was talking to you about? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. The, the question asked was if we had heard any input on if you didn't take a complete flash for an update, it reverting back to the old firmware. I personally haven't. But then again, I'm a little bit removed from the actual side on the cash flow as far as the input coming in and getting. We have, we have two techs that are dedicated strictly to cash flow. And I tell you that sometimes it will do that if it won't take the flash. Under the circumstances I was talking to you earlier about, if it has that early boot code and early firmware that won't update with the new boot code. Yeah, that, that's the issue with ours. Oh, yeah, we will definitely exchange. If there's a problem with the unit, and once again, the, question, the statement was that with some of the older boot code trying to put in newer firmware and it not taking, yeah, you can send it in to us. We can get everything set up. 
And what we do suggest is when you do the update, you need to update your boot code to the latest and greatest. Now, the boot code for the new 50 is actually a 111, version 111 for boot code. And on the IGT side, as far as the uh, head version, you're looking at version 1.30. And I'm sure that's going to change like it does almost every day.